What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. It's a common desire of members in the Leadership Lab to launch a secondary complementary business, and many of them are doing it. And the challenge is to create a profitable, predictable, and sustainable primary business that becomes the foundation that supports your new ideas and your new passions for more. After all, you've got to be healthy, both literally and in your business and your home life in order to make it all happen. Today is your chance to hear how a member of the Leadership Lab made deliberate decisions to design her primary business, which is a women's healthcare business, to scale with an incredible team and then make what she calls capital D decisions to launch a secondary complementary business. She's set to hit seven figures and we couldn't be more excited for her. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. If you are a service-based business owner who's wanting to elevate your capabilities to lead your team, you're in the right place. Running a business, casting your vision, and shifting from practitioner to CEO takes courage, structure, and the support of a team, but not just any team. So if you're thinking that because you own a successful business and you've hired people to come and join you, then you really should know how to lead them, stop beating yourself up. And instead, stick with me and stay open to learning how you can improve your leadership skills here every single week. The Stacking Your Team podcast was launched over four years ago as a companion resource to the award-winning Biz Chicks podcast hosted by Natalie Ekdahl, our CEO and founder, who's been sharing her incredible free podcast resource for women entrepreneurs since 2014. Natalie and I both have a big heart for service-based business owners who are juggling life at home, in their community, their industry, and of course, in their business. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach here at BizChicks Inc., where I lean on my 25 plus years of experience leading people at a Fortune 50 corporation. I'm here to help you build a diverse and agile team of high-performing people who have a passion for winning and a deep desire to transform the lives of the clientele that you serve. So let's get to it with this reminder that our longstanding listeners will certainly recognize. The team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Dr. Sarah Wilson is a passionate naturopathic doctor, author, researcher, and practice mentor. After studying human kinetics and natural pseudical sciences at the University of Guelph, Sarah chose to leave her research career to enter into naturopathic medicine so that she could apply her research clinically. As the founder and director of Advanced Women's Health, Dr. Sarah now has a thriving practice serving women Ontario-wide in Canada. She also runs Naturopathic Clinic Mentorship, a company that helps naturopathic doctors to learn and apply evidence-based treatment strategies into their practices so that their patients and businesses thrive. She's also a wife, a mom to a two-year-old boy, and she's getting ready to welcome their second child any day now. Her mom is her nanny, and her hubby, who's also a doctor, acts as her key IT tech resource on the side, adding more ease into her life. 
With both of her businesses, she's on a mission to change healthcare for women once and for all and end the cycle of women trying to find answers to their health problems, yet only feeling defeated, and instead ensure they get the help that they need. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk about all things health and business, my favorites. <laughs> I'm excited to have you here. I am thrilled that you are a Canadian member of the Leadership Lab who happens to live literally less than an hour's drive from me. I know. We're so close. We always can talk about the weather in the course together. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I'm thrilled to have you because... Well, you're just a joy to hang around with for sure. But the other thing is I love your mission, Sarah. You really are clear about what it is that you're wanting to provide in terms of the service menu that you provide, the incredible team that you have stacked in order to be able to address seemingly everyone's issues that they may have as a woman that's out there. So tell us, what drove you to decide to be a naturopathic doctor? Yeah, it's a great question. So I was the person who no one could figure out. That has just been my health history in my life. So I was actually, I was undiagnosed with celiac disease for 18 years. So I was in and out of hospital. I was very sick. No one could figure out what was going on. And it was actually a naturopathic doctor who was like, I think you need to look into this. And so getting that diagnosis and then going through that recovery, I dealt with a lot of hormone issues. I dealt with a variety of weight regulation issues, inflammatory issues, everything. And I saw specialist after specialist and they were all amazing. They meant so well, but they were like, Sarah, like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. So that, I always say we avoid our calling, right? Everyone avoids their calling. (laughs) So that took me into research. So I went into research and I kept getting handed natural compounds to do research on. So I was in a lab that focused on obesity and immunology, which is the immune system. And they were handing me mulberry extract and omega-3s and ginseng. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot get away from this, right? And I saw how effective these compounds were at being able to change our physiology. And so I would go and speak at conferences and talk to other published authors. And we were all sitting there being like, no one's using this. And so it really just broke my heart to sit in a research lab. And I missed clinical, like I missed the people aspect. But to see all of these compounds that are wildly effective and they weren't being utilized. And so that's really when I kind of returned to my roots, I guess, and went into naturopathic medicine and decided that I could develop the type of practice I wanted to develop where I include the latest research. Because in Canada, it takes between seven and 10 years for a research study that is novel and clinically relevant to become used in a doctor's office. And I was just unwilling to live that life, right? Like if you have a hormonal condition and there's a treatment in the medical literature and they're like, yeah, okay, maybe in 10 years we'll be able to use this. It's just not acceptable to me, to be completely honest. And it's nothing against the system. They're doing the best with what they have, especially in Canada. They're overwhelmed, right? Medical doctors, like typical kind of MDs and specialists, they don't have time to be sitting there reading literature all day long. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's so foundational to my passion that I was like, no, this needs to be a huge part of my practice. Wow. So give us a bit of a timeline here. I'm always interested to know from start to finish, how long did it take you to become a naturopathic doctor? Yeah, so we have to do our undergraduate degree, which here is four years, and then we have an additional four years of medical school, and then you go into practice, and the expectation is that it's kind of like your residency, right, where you're learning from people for a couple of years and then heading into practice. So yeah, it's eight to 10 years just at baseline. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yes, it is intense. We have 14 courses a semester at some points in school. Like whenever people are like, oh yeah, it can't be that hard. You just learn about herbs, right? I'm like, (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm like, I got mono for the third time in school during exam periods. So it's a very intense and rigorous program that we go through, but as it should be, right? It's one of those things. People's livelihoods are in your hands. And in in Ontario specifically, we are regulated similar. So I have access to prescription drugs. I have access to do medical testing. Like I can do all of those things. I can make diagnosis. And so that's something that I really highly value and you got to work your butt off to get there. Well, and I'm sure your patients just are so grateful that you decided to stop resisting your calling and instead lean into it. So tell us about your practice, because I know the first time that you and I talked, you mentioned that your biggest goal for joining the Leadership Lab was that you wanted to create a team structure so that you would have quality time to build out your second business. So where are we at with that? (laughs) I laugh because that conversation was, I think, in June of 2021. And at the time of recording, it's February 2022. And my business has exploded. Like, I think the hardest part about 2021 was how fast we grew. So, which is a beautiful problem to have. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) Yeah. So from that place, I have two separate kind of spaces. One is Advanced Women's Health, which is our medical clinic, right? And then I have a business called Naturopathic Clinical Mentorship, where I train naturopathic doctors on evidence-based women's health strategies. So essentially, what I've had to learn through the years, and I translate it clinically to them. So from that place, since joining, I think we had one of our leadership team members that's developed quite significantly now. So our administrator, we have many more financial people on our team projecting and forecasting. We have our marketing department is growing really significantly right now. So we've really built out those systems and structures. And I think since then, I have four new NDs, naturopathic doctors. So that business has grown to the point that I have been able to restructure my life to take a week of the month off and be able to dedicate that to my CEO days and to dedicate that to thinking about my business and growth from a completely different perspective. And that applies both to the naturopathic medicine brand or my advanced woods health brand and my mentorship brand. So both of them have grown a lot. Like next year, unless we break something, we will be a seven-figure business, which is very exciting to get to witness that and to get to be a big part of that growth. Because I think that's where I want to see women go is running seven and multi-seven and eight-figure businesses. Like that's what we have the capacity to do. So the Leadership Lab has been really great because it's given me the tools to hand off to my leadership team to say, okay, you need to hire this person. Please look at the hiring course. We need to figure out the five R's for everyone on the team let's get those tools in place. And then it's constantly evolving, right? So we're like, okay, what are the drum beats going to be now in 2022 that we have a bigger team and we need more of those reproducible systems in place. So there's been so much growth and so much change, but it's been really helpful to have it structured in that container so that I haven't, I can't say I've felt lost. I haven't felt particularly overwhelmed. I'm also quite pregnant right now. (laughs) Yes, you are. So in this moment, it feels like there's a lot of whelming pieces. But again, it's structured within a container that allows me to see the next steps and know how it's going to come together. Whereas I think at the beginning of 2021, like a year ago at this time, I still felt like I was swimming. Like I didn't have that direction and I didn't have that team that could ground me and be like, Sarah, stop. I'm taking this. She's taking this. He's taking this. Like, stop. Which is a beautiful thing to go into a maternity leave, knowing that I have people who are literally like, you don't have anything to do right now. (laughs) Please step away. (laughs) (laughs) I love the fact that you purposely have built in the structure to provide you the ongoing, you know, daily operation support, but also this special week 
that you can pull out of the practice and shift over into developing curriculum, creating marketing plans, being the face of the brand for that mentorship business of yours. Because I mean, Sarah, you do nothing halfway. I mean, everything about you is grade A. So I love watching your Instagram uh, stories and how you're showing up there for those burnt out practitioners who you just adore and you really want to help them be able to stay with the momentum that they had when they first fell in love with this field and their particular niche and then serving their broad base of clientele. So wonderful to watch you that way. So the other thing I know about you, Sarah, is one of those motivating factors that really help you be that high performing entrepreneur is you have a philosophy about wealth and well-being and women and how those three key factors are all connected to each other. Can you share with us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. And it ties right into what you were saying, even about me talking to burnt out practitioners, because we're in a very unique situation right now where there's no separation from home and work and all of these different things. And so when there's already vulnerabilities with boundaries, when there's already vulnerabilities with health, they are really coming to a head. And essentially, women are at a crossroads, right? If you're a female entrepreneur who's also now being a teacher and trying to be a wife and a cook and a cleaner, you can't do it all, right? But you're at a crossroads when it comes to health, I think, and success, because if you start to burn yourself into the ground, your business will suffer, right? And we hit this point where it's like a critical mass point, right? Where it's going to switch one way or the other. And so many women right now are just, I always say like, you can't grow a seven figure business two weeks of the month. So if you feel really good and then you ovulate and then your hormones go crazy and you can't sleep and you can't focus and you can't take care of yourself, you also can't grow a business and you're not in any energetic space to jump on sales calls and to do all of those other things that we need to do because people feel that energy, right? People say to me all the time, like, your energy is magnetic. And I'm like, because I take good care of myself and I can show up in this energy and not crash when I get off the call. Yeah. And you know, I love that about how you really are a great brand ambassador for naturopathic medicine, because it makes me think about how many healthcare professionals, doctors specifically, you know, dentists that I've gone to over the years, and they're just not a great walking billboard or what they're trying to sell. And I'm always shocked that they don't realize it. They're losing patients, they're losing clients, because they themselves are not a great role model for what they're trying to hold you accountable to. And as they're creating and sharing their diagnosis with you, I'm often wondering, man, like who's taking care of you? Because we really aren't looking your best right now. And sometimes it's really obvious. So I love that those practitioners have someone like you to go to because you are there to just give them the really realize. Like you recently came into the leadership lab and you hosted a workshop for us. We were so excited. And you called it Busy Women, Angry Hormones. And you were there to really, you know, Be that naturopathic doctor and talk to those women entrepreneurs and give them the straight up talk about here's what you're doing. Here's how it's affecting your body and how you feel. And here is something you can do about it. And I think you make such a good point that I want to comment on. When you are out of integrity, people feel it deeply, like deeply, deeply, deeply. And so from that place, I always say like the most important thing for me is I have two therapists, a coach. I have, if I have a problem, someone else gets it because I choose not to carry those things. But I also recognize that in order to perform at a high level, there is going to be sacrifice. I personally believe if you don't choose your sacrifice, it chooses you. 
So I value, I live my life in alignment with my core values and I value my family. I value my health. I value integrity. I value showing up for myself. And so that means that I choose to sacrifice the dishes and cooking and cleaning and doing all of these other things, which I know you and Natalie both talk about, but those things, as much as they can seem like luxury items, that I personally do not, they are business items on like my accounting because that allows me to be in integrity, to take care of myself, to be present with my family and to show up for my patients, people in my community, my NDs at a high level so that when they say to me, how did you get there? I'm like, here's the playbook. It's not an accident. It is not fake. It is not curated. I have walked the walk. I have fallen down so many times. And before the birth of my first son, so I have a two and a half year old, I decided I would never burn out again. It just decided. I had done it three times. And I was like, I will never do this again. And when I made that decision, everything changed. Right. And I think for so many of us, it sounds like, oh, that's a nice option. You have to decide that your health is not optional. You have to decide that if you want to scale a business, you have to do it on a solid foundation. And that foundation is your health. Because if you can't get up in the morning and trust your energy and trust that you can accomplish your to do list because your energy fluctuates massively or your hormones fluctuate massively, how do you build a business on that? And clearly you guys can hear the passion in my voice. Like I I feel very strongly about this because it is something that women have been taught to sacrifice and that we don't talk about in the C-suite, right? Like I have so many patients who are entrepreneurs, who are running big businesses, who are in the C-suite and they're coming to me and they're like, it's the culture has normalized everyone feeling like crap. And I'm like, it's just not an option anymore. Like we can't do that, which is why I do talks like busy women, angry hormones, because there is a direct connection between your stress response, your hormones, your level of inflammation and your productivity and your dollars. Right. And so from that place, I think we just instead of resisting it as a culture, we need to step into it and face it head on and say these are the list of things I'm willing to sacrifice. These are the things I'm not willing to sacrifice. And here are the things I'm going to do to refill my health cup so that I know I'm waking up on a solid foundation every day. Because that allows you to trust yourself. That allows you to be in integrity. And when you're in integrity and trust yourself, there's not a decision that doesn't come at you that you're like, I don't know, am I going to have the energy for that? Am I going to be able to handle that? Can I make a sales call that day, right? And I think that frees up so much mental energy that women don't even realize they are, that that's a huge drain for them. It's so wonderful to hear your passion about this, Sarah. It's so obvious that this past year, you've taken deliberate action with thoughtful strategies to enable you to do what it is that you want to do. You've had all these goals and instead of just, you know, writing them on a whiteboard or writing them in a journal or, you know, talking to your husband about them, you really are taking action to do it and you're asking for help along the way. And you've got these non-negotiables and you've got these boundaries that you're brave enough to just declare them out loud without worrying about the judgment for it and just knowing that your well-being your wealth and those goals, they're just so darn connected as a woman, a business woman, a woman in the field of medicine. It's got to all stay linked together or else you're never going to feel like you're enough, that you're doing enough, that you have enough energy, that you're making a big enough impact in your community. So it's wonderful to watch you do that. And one of my most favorite things to do in the leadership lab is to watch all of you realize once you have this structure built up and a team built up that you have this, what people call like extra time. I have so much extra time now. Wow. I'm just amazed at how much extra time I have or how many things I've been able to get accomplished where before it would take us, you know, it would take me a good week or a solid two weeks to crank that out. I'm actually being able to do that all in two days. And it's because you're being thoughtful about really structuring your life at home and your life at work. And you're just an incredible example of that, Sarah. 
Thank you. And I think it's like, it's a beautiful point you have about time, right? Because what I've realized in the last year is we will always use time and money as an excuse, right? And I decided, I always say capital D decided because there's like little D decided (laughs) where you're like, yeah. And then you like capital D decided. I decided that I was no longer going to be available to those things holding me back. That's why when we had the call, I was like, leadership lab is the right thing for me. And you're like, this is how much it costs. And I was like, done, take my credit card, done, right? Those conversations don't come in to my mind near as much as they did before because I just decided which direction I was going to go, right? And from that place, I decided that that week of the month was going to be incredibly productive and financially lucrative. And in Q4, we sold over six figures in programs that I was able to create based on having that week. So I took the summer to get caught up. I took September, October to sit in that space and ideate and use it. And it was in November and December that we sold over six figures in programs because I had the space to be available to see where I was needed. Mm -hmm. Right. So sales conversations aren't salesy when you're inviting someone into the thing they've asked you for. And I had this space and time to be available for people to present to me their challenges. And I listened to them and I talked about them from an authentic place and built a business out of it, right? And I think that is such an important thing to remember as well is that when we're talking, it's very easy for someone to say, oh, well, she's filling all of her time with like business and driving forward on her health and this and that and the other thing. But There's also of that week, it's really important to have white space. It's really important to have space to listen. And I feel like as women, so many of us are empaths and we take on so much from other people and don't fill ourselves up that we almost shut down business opportunities because it requires us to have that creative white space to listen to what other people need. And we're like, I can't handle anyone else's needs right now, right? But just slowing down and giving yourself that space as much as it can be scary, as much as it can financially, if you're in a one-to-one, like an hourly base model, it can feel like a risk. When you do it intentionally, it is the biggest reward. And I think it that has been such a huge learning lesson for me in 2021 is like prioritize your health, prioritize being in line with your values and in integrity, but also just prioritize the space to create and ideate from a full cup because that is where the big business opportunities and just reward at the end of the day, like I love what I do, right? So the reward comes from, I think. So what advice would you have for someone, a professional who has a successful business, a secure niche, she's built up a great reputation. She has a beautiful team stacked around her so that she can scale And she has an additional complimentary passion that she wants to go after that because that's a common thing in the leadership I do. That is so common. And it just, it warms my heart to see all of you give yourselves permission and just real bandwidth to be able to go do it. So what were some of the things that you did when you knew that you wanted to launch your mentorship program and have it become... It's not a passion project in the sense that it's not a hobby, right? There's no like, I'm not going to pour all this time into this for a hobby. Mm -mm. This is a secondary complimentary business. How did you think about going from shifting from 100% focus onto building out the clinic? Because you have a large team now as well, and you offer a full service menu for women. What was the bridge? How did you get yourself over there? I'm going to answer this in a way that you probably aren't expecting. I'm a nine out of 10 quick start. Yes, you are. So I just decided that I was going to do it and required that people came along with me. But knowing my strengths and my vulnerabilities, I have built out a team around me that require me to look into the details and require me to look into my capacity. So my executive assistant controls my calendar. I do not do that anymore because I would overfill it. And she blocks me time, right? So she's like, you need to do this and this and this in this period of time. And so you can't overfill your time. I also, we have a project manager who is 
absolutely fantastic and drives me insane. (laughs) From that place, he's like, these are all the details of the program that you said you want to execute. This is the amount of time, because we have a project management system that we work on. This is the amount of time you have to dedicate to this. And this is the amount of time that your EA says is in your calendar. So like, what's up? So for me, building out my business in terms of advanced women's health is always a huge priority. But in taking on naturopathic mentorship, it was one thing that I had the capacity to have what I call the downloads, right? So I had the space to have the ideas for the programs come in. And that having those weeks off allowed me to get those ideas. And like I said, hear from different people what they needed. But I just decided I was going to do it. And it was actually having built a team that has allowed it to be successful because they're like, stop. No, you're not doing that. Right. Like I have a team of people who boundary me very intentionally because they know that I'm not willing to sacrifice X, Y, Z. Right. I play with my son in the morning. We put him to bed at night. We always do dinner together. Like, All of these things happen in addition to my health and my priorities and my personal development goals. And so they're just very realistic with me in a way that I don't always enjoy, frequently (laughs) don't enjoy. (laughs) You might not enjoy it, Sarah, but what you have intentionally done is invited people to come and join you on the team who understand the value of accountability and who are open to giving and receiving feedback. And so are you, right? That's the clincher, right? There's lots of leaders that are great at giving it, not so great at receiving it and don't even ask for it. So you've intentionally realized that, okay, I need a handler. Like as a nine quick start, (laughs) I need a handler. We literally call them my handler, which is why I'm (laughs) laughing because like I have one in the business because I'm not allowed to talk to certain people on my team because they frustrate me. And so I have one who was like, we just think so differently, right? It's like, I'm like action, action. And she's like, I'll step in and soften this conversation and tell you the outcome. And then I have some who handle me who are very specifically like, Sarah, that is not happening for you. Like you do not have time in your day. I'm like, but it's a really great idea. And they're like, for Q2. Yeah. Stop. Right. Which is really helpful. Oh my gosh. I love that. Well, it's incredibly wonderful to hear a female entrepreneur who's also a mom, who's also a life partner and a daughter and a friend and a community leader and a colleague. Like you have an incredible network of professional colleagues, Sarah. And it's really wonderful how you and all of your colleagues are really having some solid impact to people's health within your local communities, as well as globally. So tell me, what are you excited about? I mean, yes, we have a little baby that's coming on our way in March. And in addition to having a new child to look after and to, you know, all the joy that that brings to your family, what else are you excited about for this year? Oh my God, so many things. Again, I'm a nine. (laughs) I'm like, where do I start on the list? Foundationally, I think the thing that excites me the most is that we are in a scalable position right now. So I have become very clear through coaching and through all the personal development work that I do that my role in this world is to change healthcare for women as they know it, to change how women view postpartum, to change how women view their hormones, to change how women in business can produce. And I think the thing that is so exciting for me right now is we have built that foundation. I have a foundation in my naturopathic mentorship programs, I have a foundation in advanced women's health. And I can see through working with our financial team, scalability, I can see those metrics, I can see that growth and development. And so for me, money and numbers is a benefit of business. But for every dollar I see, I see women. And I see the impact that we have the ability to make on those people. And 
our clinic, we have so many patients who have seen umpteen doctors and specialists and other naturopaths. And we are now positioned to be able to market and scale to help those people because we have a very effective and unique approach to care. And that to me is lighting me up right now because I can see the thousands and thousands of people that in December of 2022 will look at their lives and say, I never thought I could be here. And that to me is like, I could cry. Like it's as exciting as having a baby, which I hope my baby never listens to this because it would, <laughs> they would be like, mom, really? But from that space, it is as exciting. Like I feel the thing that I deal with in therapy at the said moment is this massive pull between like the grounding and being in the newborn phase and being so excited for that. And also this massive responsibility I feel to changing healthcare because I know I can do it. And that is the balance of a female entrepreneur, right? And I think I'm just so excited to see how that evolves over the year, knowing we're going to help people, but also knowing that I'm going to do it from a place of being really boundaried and having all of this skin to skin cuddles with this baby. So it's really cool to get to see that and to set an example of that too, because for so many women, they feel like they have to either stop their business completely, yeah, right, in order to have children, or they have to sacrifice that time. And I'm dead set on getting both, (laughs) (laughs) which everyone in my life would agree with. (laughs) She's always dead set on getting it all, but I think it's possible. And I want to do that. And then I want to share that with people. Well, you're doing it, Sarah. You're doing it every single day. So tell our listeners, how can they stay connected with you and learn more about what you offer at your clinic and what you offer within your naturopathic mentorship programs? Yeah, thank you so much. So Advanced Women's Health is our clinic. So we serve patients in Ontario. We will likely be expanding to other provinces in Canada. But at the present moment, our licensing requires we only see patients who are in Ontario. So from that place, you could always connect with me. So it's Dr. Sarah underscore ND on Instagram. And I can always try to help connect you with an ND in your space. I'm happy to do that if that is something that you're interested in. Because with my naturopathic mentorship brand, I've trained hundreds of NDs. So I have people who I'm really confident in their skills from all over North America. And so that is probably the best way to connect with me. We are very committed to sharing a lot more this year on the Advanced Women's Health and Sarah, like my personal Instagram. So those are always places to connect. But foundationally, what I want people to take away from this is just to know that they can feel at their best and to not have to sit in this space anymore of like, well, this is as good as it gets. I'm turning 40. So everything's downhill from here, right? I foundationally want women to question how well they can feel and get the support they need in order to do that, whether it's a naturopathic doctor, whether it's actually seeing your doctor, get your paps ladies, right? <laughs> like yeah. Whatever that mm-hmm. looks like, just prioritize yourself because you can have both and we just don't have enough models of it right now. And so people are thinking they have to choose. And if I can be that model, great. If someone else can be that model, awesome. But just look for those opportunities to have those people around you. Because when you see someone else do it, it's like you've been given a permission slip to step into it and to try to do that yourself. And that's what I want to see. I just love knowing that you're out there on a mission informing women that we don't have to settle and to keep asking questions until you find the answers. And, you know, walking out of a doctor's office with your head hung low and getting in the car and just beating yourself up for this mindset that you're in where, you know, sometimes we can think we're just making it up or, you know, this just isn't real or I'm not tough enough. I'm just not strong enough. I don't have the stamina that my other friends and colleagues have. So thank you so much for uncovering that and giving all of us permission to know that when we feel better, we will do better. And that includes both at work and at home and within our friendships and our communities that we serve as well. So let's just get out there and do whatever we can to feel better. Healthy women are a force to be reckoned with. And in my lifetime, I will see that massive momentum come out of that. And I'm so excited to watch that. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for everything that you do, Sarah. 
So here's the thing. You could hear the passion Sarah has for women's health care. When she joined the Leadership Lab, she had a clear goal. She wanted to get a team set up so that she could create a second business training and licensing naturopathic doctors. And so she did with capital D decisions. I just love that. She now has a team of six naturopathic doctors, a registered acupuncturist, a certified nutritional practitioner, a yoga therapist, and a professional administration team at her clinic. It's been great to meet her clinic manager, who is an active member of the Leadership Lab team trainings too. Since last June through this January, her business has grown massively, and in spite of this massive growth, you heard her say that she does not feel lost or overwhelmed. Instead, she feels supported with the strong structure within her clinic's operation, and it's enabled her to feel great every day, even as she awaits the birth of baby number two. So what did you think about the boundaries she has and her willingness to have members of her team step into the role of being her handler, steering her, holding her accountable, and providing her feedback to help her stay on mission? You know, it's no fluke that she was able to sell six figures worth of programs for her second business in a few months because she had the capacity to prepare for that launch. And then she had the stamina to be the face of her naturopathic mentorship program. That sacred space that she told us about, you know, that week that she creates each month to fully focus on building out her programs has paid off so well, both for the profitability of her businesses and the level of impact that she and her team can have with those program members. I highly recommend you visit Sarah's website at advancedwomenshealth.com, where you'll see an incredible full menu of services designed to help women feel better. You can get help with everything from IVF, to thyroid issues, to hair loss, to autoimmune repair, to lab testing and vitamin shots, and so much more. Sarah and her team also offer virtual care and a patient online store. Her blog page is very comprehensive too. And if you're a practitioner who's looking for advanced mentorship, I encourage you to connect with Sarah on Instagram to see her in action. And of course, all of her links are in the show notes. Before I go, I have two things to share with you. Natalie's Six Figures Lab is accepting applications right now for an April cohort. So if you're a coach, a consultant, or a marketer, and you'd like to earn six figures in revenue, take home eight to 10,000 each month, and then create six figures in profit, Natalie's group coaching program might be a great fit for you. You can get all the details about how being surrounded by other women who are also building a business built on a retainer model over at the website at bizchicks.com slash six figures lab. And remember, we spell chicks here with an X. And lastly, if you are finding the Stacking Your Team podcast helpful, you'll enjoy my weekly emails that land in your inbox the same morning that a fresh episode airs. In those weekly emails, I share stories and insight that I don't share on air. So why not see what's happening over there too? You can join by clicking the link in the show notes. We won't spam you and you can unsubscribe anytime, but I'm betting you won't. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.